Right in this video, I would like to talk about complex fractions, and what what a complex fraction is um, is a fraction that has other fractions in the numerator and denominator. So you have like fractions within fractions here. An example of that would be something such as this one, where you have this um, big fraction where this part, this bigger bar here in the middle is the fraction bar, and in the numerator of this bigger fraction, you have 5x squared over 4yz. And in the denominator of this big fraction, you have 15xy over z squared, right? So I call these I call these baby fractions inside the bigger fraction, and right? that's just the way I refer to them, right? With these little fractions inside the bigger fraction. All right, the plan of attack uh, is that we know that we can multiply the numerator and the denominator of a fraction by the same non-zero expression and everything would still be okay, right? Because that same non-zero expression, if you multiply the top and the bottom of a fraction by the same thing, uh, that's essentially multiplying that fraction by the number one. And we know that multiplying one times anything does not change the value of the, the thing we're multiplying one by. But what we're going to do, though, is figure out um, a specific uh, way to write the number one, right? We're going to do a fancy version of one. Right, and here's the plan of attack on doing that. So we look at our, our baby fractions inside of our bigger fraction there, and we say, all right, what's the least common denominator of our, all of our baby fractions? Right, well, here you've got 4yz, and down here you have z squared. So the least common denominator would be, well, you need the 4, you need the y, and you got z and z squared, so you need to take the most that you have, so z squared. All right, so 4yz squared is the least common denominator. And that is what we're going to multiply the top and the bottom of the bigger fraction by. So we'd say, all right, times 4yz squared over 4yz squared. Because that is a fancy way to write the number 1, right? So we're not really changing this, the value of this expression. We're just rewriting it in a different way. All right, so we multiply the uh, 4yz squared times the 5x squared over 4yz, we get 20x squared yz squared over 4yz, right? Because it's like 4yz squared over 1, so you're multiplying you know, straight across there. All right, and then in the denominator of the bigger fraction, we have 4yz squared times 15xy over z squared. So what happens there? We have 4 times 15, which gives you 60. We have x. y times y gives you y squared. Uh, all o z squared. All over the z squared. All right, so now we can simplify the um, each of the individual fractions in the numerator and denominator, respectively. So let's see, 20x squared yz squared over 4yz, that goes down to, let's see, four, 20 divided by 4 gives you 5. Uh, the x squared stays. We see that the y's divide out, and then you've got a z squared over z, so that's going to leave you a z. So this entire numerator simplifies down to 5x squared z. Then the denominator, we have 60x. Uh, y squared, and then the z squares this time divide out. So your denominator is just left with 60xy squared. And now you have a rational expression that looks more familiar to what we're used to playing with. And we just simplify it down as before. So 5 over 60, this is going to leave a 12 in the denominator. x squared over x is going to leave an x in the numerator. Uh, you've got a z in the numerator, and then a y squared in the denominator. So this entire expression simplifies down to xz over 12y squared. All right, everybody see that? All right, so that's the I idea. It's the same concept uh, if you have a fraction over a fraction, like we do here, uh, as it is if we say, let's look at example two, where you have a little more complicated looking um, complex fraction. But the concept stays the same, right? You have these little baby fractions inside the bigger fraction, right? So you go off to the side, you say, all right, what's the um, least common denominator of all the, the little fractions? All right, well, here you have x and x squared as denominators of the smaller fractions. And so the LCD would just be x squared. And now we're going to take x squared and multiply it to the top and the bottom of the bigger fraction because that's our fancy version of 1. And now we're going to use the distributive property, right? So we're going to have x times 1, which is x squared, plus and then x squared times 4 over x. What happens there? Well, that, that would give you 4x squared over x, which just simplifies down 
to 4x. Right? I'm expecting you guys to see that 4 over x times x squared simplifies down to 4x. If you need to go off to the side and work it out to see it, then by all means, please do that. And then the denominator of the bigger fraction goes to, let's see, distribute the x squared to 1, you get x squared, and then x squared um, times 16 over x squared, the x squared disappears, so you get x squared minus 16. So your denominator goes down to just x squared minus 16. And now we, again, have a rational expression that's just easier to deal with. So to simplify that up, we need to factor the numerator and the denominator. So we have, I'm going to go up here. So let's see, in the numerator, we can take an x out and leave x plus 4. The denominator is the difference of two squares, so x plus 4, x minus 4. And we see that the uh, x plus 4 is common to both the numerator and the denominator, so they can divide out to 1, so we're just left with x over x minus 4. All right, make sense? All right, let's do, uh, let's do one more. All right, so 5 over x minus 3 minus 2 over x, and all that's divided by 1 over x plus 2 over x minus 3. Well, this concept stays the same. Find the least common denominator of all the little baby fractions. Well, you've got x minus 3 and x up here, and x and x minus 3 down here, so the LCD, we need both of them x and x minus 3. All right, that's the least common denominator. Then we're going to literally multiply both the numerator and the denominator of the bigger fraction by x times x minus 3, the LCD. And we're going to, have to use the distributive property. We have 5 over x minus 3 times x times x minus 3. Right, we're distributing that through. If you want, write it out the following way, where we've distributed the x times x minus 3 through the numerator of the bigger fraction and through the denominator of the bigger fraction, and it would look like this. All right, I'm going to move down the page just a little bit here. Give me some more room. All right, so now what happens to... 5 over x minus 3 times x over x minus 3. Well, the x minus 3's divide out, right, like that. And we're just left with 5x, right? Then minus, what happens over here? Well, this x and this x divide out, and we're left with, and I'm going to encourage you to leave it written as 2 times x minus 3 as opposed to distributing that 2 through getting 2x minus 6. I want you to wait on that because it's too easy to make a sign error. Right, just divide the x's out, and we're just left with the factor 2 times the factor x minus 3. Then all of that is divided by what happens in the denominator. Well, over here we see the x's disappear, and we're left with 1 times x minus 3, which is just x minus 3. Then we have plus, and then over here we see that the x minus 3 and x minus 3 go away, and so we're left with 2x. And now it looks more familiar to something we're used to dealing with, right? So now, simplify up that numerator and simplify up the denominator individually. So we would have 5x minus 2x plus 6. And that's why I wanted you to wait before distributing the 2 through, because it's too easy to forget this. It's really a negative 2 that we're distributing through, and make a sign error of not having the plus 6 there. Right? So just be, be careful. And the denominator goes to 3x minus 3. So then we have... 3x plus 6 in the numerator over 3x minus 3 in the denominator. We cannot just divide out those three x's. Remember, we need to factor the numerator and factor the denominator. So this is 3 times x plus 2. And this denominator goes to 3 times x minus 1. Now we see that the 3's divide out, and we're just left with x plus 2 over x minus 1. All right, they're called complex fractions, and the goal is to take the complex fraction and rewrite it uh, so that it's not a complex fraction anymore. It looks more familiar to something we're used to dealing with. Uh, and my recommendation of doing that is to find the least common denominator of all the little baby fractions and then multiply the numerator and denominator of the big fraction by that least common denominator and uh, wipe out the little baby fractions. Right? And then simplify up whatever is remaining uh, and then reduce that fraction. All right, so that's it. Study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.